Jesus departed from there and came to his native place accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, Jesus began to teach in the synagogue and many who heard him were astonished. They said, Where did this man get all this? What kind of wisdom has been given him? What mighty deeds are wrought by his hands? Is he not the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his native place and among his own kin and in his own house. So Jesus was not able to perform any mighty deeds there apart from curing a few sick people by laying his hands on them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. The Gospel of the Lord. Sisters and brothers, my life has been scattered in movements throughout the world. I never asked for it, but somehow or the other, I was asked and in obedience, I did whatever was asked of me. And I have seen myself growing in relationship with God and my relationship with others. And these others were at times of different countries, of different religions, and of different convictions. But I always try to center myself on the way I relate to God and the way I relate to others. The last few years I am in India and perhaps you read the news. The so-called religious fundamentalism is fast growing among certain circles but they are powerful kind of circles. And it was my challenge when the bishops of India, and there are more than 200 bishops, and the bishops of all of Asia, from Pakistan up to Japan, and from Kazakhstan up to China. The bishops wanted me to lead them in the way Christians can live in multi-religious kind of situations, which I think is the fact all over the world. Whether you want it or not, I see this in this very dear country of ours. I see this also in Europe. I worked with two popes and I'm still working with Pope Francis also in this particular area. 
I just want to be brief now to tell you what is the word of God telling us especially today. You see there is in all of us we are attracted by God we are intensely sometimes with him but sometimes we also go our own ways not necessarily because we want but because of the world in which we live so it is like uh, going away from the Lord and coming back to him the homecoming I would say on the one hand we like to be with the Lord but on the other hand we also are influenced sometimes by the kind of world in which we live and then we go away from him. again how do I relate to this God the living God and I feel I have grown a lot because I did not isolate myself from others but on the contrary I extended the hand of dialogue not everybody was ready but I remember the words of St. Paul that we heard in the second reading today when I am weak then I am strong Yes, evangelization, sharing the good news with others has been my primary concern because what the Lord has done to me in my life, why should I just keep it for myself? Why can't I share that with others and share not just with my lips and words but share with others? my life the kind gestures the goodness of God the grace of God and so I feel I keep on growing because the living God does not stop calling me like a homecoming we have this gospel passage today and I have to have I've had to preach at least 20 times because every year the bishop celebrates the chrism oil mass on Monday Thursday morning and in the evening there is the washing of the feet and together with my priests over hundred of them I celebrated these masses and the gospel of the day is always the passage of the gospel that we just heard today Jesus coming to his native place and the way people related to him, the way they rejected him. The first reading also talks to us today about the hard-heartedness, the rebelliousness of the people of Israel. We are not any different, I am not any different, I feel, and therefore, I constantly try to keep in touch with God. God never abandons us. It is often we who abandon God and then experiencing that our hearts are made for Him and that we will never be in peace until our hearts rest in God. We keep coming to him, but on our own terms, as it were. This hide and seek kind of play with God on part of all of us, I call the homecoming. That is what I pick up today from the gospel. Jesus' homecoming. Now, the homecoming can be a com complex affair. The one returning may have changed. 
Jesus had disappeared as it were when he was the age of 30. And almost he is now 33. The last year of his life on earth as the incarnate son of God. And Jesus comes back after having left Nazareth. And so we cannot rule out the fact that the one who returns may have changed because Jesus was busy doing his heavenly father's business which is revelation of himself, revelation of the father in him, definite and complete revelation that Jesus lives. That was, that was his mission given by the Father. And so he does not reveal at one, to, at one time as if everything is over in a second or one hour or one day. He takes three years, but perhaps even from the womb of our blessed mother, the moment he was born till the moment he was crucified. Jesus kept on revealing to us the heavenly father. And so there was change taking place in the incarnate son of God as he was revealing gradually. And so the one homecoming who is, who is coming home has changed and those at home may have changed too. So we hear in today's gospel that Jesus returns to his hometown in Nazareth. He had left Nazareth, as I said, as a carpenter. He returns to Nazareth as teacher and healer. No more the carpenter that people knew. But have people changed? in their outlook on him. The gospel suggests that people in his hometown could not accept him and they reject him. They wanted him to be a person they had always known. I feel same with us. As children, as young people, as adults, at this age of, stage of our life, we don't want to change. We still have fixated idea of God, of Jesus, that we had once upon a time. But he is the living God. He is not a static once and for all, 2000 years ago, the story was over. No, he keeps on growing. He keeps on growing. And he is real in every situation, in your situation and my situation, in our situation. And yet, people do not show willingness to change themselves, to change sometimes their ideas about the living God. And so Jesus' homecoming turned out to be more painful than his living home. The people of Nazareth thought that they knew Jesus and they don't, know, they don't need to know him any more, any better. This became a block, an obstacle to their learning more about Jesus. The word of God that we listen is actual word of God. It's not human words. Do I listen to them? And do they make any effect in my life, on my life? Do I change as I should? The people of Nazareth are caught up in their projections which they imposed on Jesus. Their hearts were closed on their own ideas. They had made about Jesus. Ideas such as Jesus is like one of us. Educated in a family like we were, prayed in a synagogue like everyone else. 
everyone knew his mother and so on. That's all that they had known, the people of Nazareth. They are not open to see him changed, how he is revealing the Father by doing so much good to everybody, by his word and by deed. So they say, we know where he comes from. Jesus, so to speak, was imprisoned. The idea of Jesus was imprisoned in their own understanding. Jesus tells them the reason for this rejection of him. He says, a prophet is not accepted in his own town, his own family, or in his own home. The prophet speaks in the name of God by remaining completely in resonance with God. Yet, the prophet disturbs the comfortable and comforts the disturbed. We don't want to change, that's why. So, dear friends, I conclude, we too can easily assume that we know Jesus when in reality we only know one side of him, perhaps. Then we form a biased opinion based on our partial knowledge or on some past experience of God, of Jesus, and we become attached to that idea of ours, fixated idea of God. When the evidence is there to challenge us and yet we remain completely unmoved. There is more to Jesus than the fixed opinion of the people in Nazareth they were aware of. In the synagogue of Nazareth, Jesus is rebuked by his own family for the good he does to everyone through his words and actions, not in his own name, but led by the Spirit of God the Father. That is why the people of Nazareth did not receive him, nor did they understand him. It was Jesus' very ordinariness that made it difficult for the people of Nazareth to see him as he really was, and in order to become our faithful and merciful high priest before the Father's throne, Jesus chose to become one of us, a brother in all things. It is by entering into this living relationship, going away because we are inclined to sin, but always keeping to come back, the homecoming, and to renew our relationship in that newness that Jesus brings and the growth he effects in each one of us till we come to life in abundance. And so let us ask God that we keep on growing as Christians Keep on growing in the knowledge and in the everlasting love of God.